Well, it's just gone 5.30 in the morning and uh, we're looking out over the boat pool. I came down late yesterday evening and decided to set my stall out to try and catch some big bream, which uh, you probably would have seen some footage now of uh, one of the doubles that I caught last night. There's quite a lot of activity on the surface out there. There's a lot of catfish in this lake, big, big catfish, and they're slapping around all over the place at the moment. Uh, there's a few carp poking their heads out as well. The wind's just come on the water and it's looking pretty good for uh, an early morning bite, to be honest. Um, so I, like, I like catching species. Oh, there you go. That was a fish there. I don't know if I can zoom in on that. And that was actually a carp. And that was pretty close to my right hand rod. Um, I like fishing for all different species now. I think as I've got a bit older, I've really sort of like embraced the whole specimen hunting mentality. Um, I think I was inspired, to be honest, by the sort of Catching the Impossible uh, programs as well. You know, the brilliant series of programs. If anyone hasn't watched those, you've got to go and watch them. And um, yeah, you know, I thought, well, church isn't fishing for the carp. Let's get on boat pool and have a go for the bream. And uh, it's a lovely, lovely water. So I put some bait out, put some hemp out on the clear gravel run last night. But it's just getting to that time of the morning where you expect the carp to be getting their heads down and having a feed. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that the rods will uh, will go off with the carp soon. It's not the easiest of waters, but uh, who knows, there's always a chance. I'm fishing until about nine o'clock this morning. Now I've got to go and do some work today but I think I'll be back down again tonight to have another go. Saturday afternoon of the bank holiday. Got down last night, just as it was getting dark. Put out some hemp and corn, and I'm actually bream fishing. I don't quite know which way I've put this uh, blog together. Maybe you've seen the pictures of the bream I caught last night, maybe you haven't. But either way, caught three bream last night, three doubles, up to 12 pound eight, I think it was. Um, that was a female. Uh, two 10 pound males as well. You can tell the male bream because they've got the sort of barnacles on them. Especially this time of year, we're into uh, the start of May now. They're all getting ready to spawn. Um, hence why I'm fishing for them actually, because this is the time of year they're gonna be at their biggest. And I've heard rumors at this lake here, the boat pull up at Horton Complex, could have done a 20 pounder in the past. So, you know, that fish at this time of year is gonna be absolutely massive. I'm all about catching fish of all different species. You know, I love it. When I was younger, I was just carp, carp, carp. And nowadays I am, um, I like catching all sorts of species, whether it be roach on the river, uh, chub, perch, pike, carp, and um, you know I can't turn down the opportunity to fish for some of the biggest bream in the country. So I just thought I'd do a little bit about how I'm fishing for them. I know it's something that's not uh, you don't normally see by a so-called carp angler, but basically what we're doing is like scaled down carp tactics. Really, still fishing with the braids on the uh, on the reels. I want to find the spots precisely so the braid what it does where there's no stretch inside it as I'm casting it out I'm getting the exact feel uh, for, transmitted through the braid of what I'm landing on and out there uh, I'm fishing two rods on the same spot there's a lovely gravel strip that runs through the swim really really hard with quite a bit of depth over it bream quite like deep water and normally if I was targeting bream I'd be looking for silty areas but for some reason in this lake they do patrol up and down the sort of gravel strips so I've got a nice deep gravel run out there that's where both the rods are positioned on. Loads of hemp, loads of corn over the top of it. And then I'm basically fishing just little, uh, little scaled down braid rigs. Let's just grab one out so you can see it. There you go, I didn't have that pick it up. Just a little braid rig there on a lid clip system. Two ounce lead. So I might not be out of here because the plane's going over. Two ounce lead. And then what I'm doing is before I'm casting out, I'm threading on a little mesh bag. So, 
just a little mesh bag like this, about the size of a golf ball. And that's half filled with boilies, which are crumbed up, you know, like crushed up boilies, and half filled with a mixed size of pellet. So that's gonna go over, sit on top of the hemp, sit on top of the corn, and when the shoals of bream come through, hopefully they drop onto it, and pick up the little imitation corn that I've got on the hair itself. Now that imitation corn, I've soaked in Scopex flavoring, which is a real sweet flavoring. Uh, bream love that sort of stuff, you know, like molasses, Scopex, that sort of thing. Um, so it's been soaking in there. I keep them inside my specialist bag. Um, I've always got maggots that are soaked in beetle in, and I've always got corn which is soaked in scopex. And uh, yeah, we'll see what tonight brings. I haven't fished today, I've been up at the lodge. I've had loads of work to do on the laptop and stuff like that, so I've actually been up there um, doing that today. It's about four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon, something like that. Uh, Carp Dog Dave is just chilling out watching the water. I've just flicked the rods out again, um, just to see if I can get a carp bite, really. And uh, we'll see what tonight brings, but fingers crossed we might get a sort of 15 plus bream. Now that'd be amazing if I could catch a 15 pound plus bream tonight, actually fishing for them, spot on. Right, hopefully you're enjoying this. And I'll touch base with you, hopefully throughout the night, with a big slab, or in the morning, have a not caught one. Well, at least someone's enjoying a nice uh, afternoon snooze, eh, Dave? And once again, I'm relegated to the chair and the feet on the bucket. It's turning into a lovely afternoon. I'm going to try and get some rest and hopefully be up catching bream all night with a bit of luck. Chap to our right has just had a little stocky, little uh, mirror carp, probably about 15 pounds, something like that. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed for a good night ahead. Well, the bream are definitely active today, so it's time to give them a bit of uh, food tonight. Look at that. That is a bream's heaven right there. Maggot, corn, hemp, broken boilie. Beautiful. Well, here we go. A bit of a rarity catching a, a big bream during the daylight hours. I was just having a snooze down there on the chair. But this is what we came for this weekend. Oh, still go. Not everyone's a cup of tea, but a great big fat female bream. Oh, let's see if I get her up. There you go. <laughs> big old slab. <laughs> she's a goat, mate. 1310, uh, this one. So I've uh, still got a night left. Hopefully, that's a sign of things to come. I've had two during the hours of, uh, well, two in the last hour. So I think I'm going to be in for a bit of a, a bit of a manic night. Yeah. All right, slip it back. Right, it was first thing in the morning, on Sunday morning. Uh, quiet night for me last night. Put quite a bit of bait out, trying to catch the bream. Um, they were feeding yesterday afternoon in the bright sunshine, so I thought, right, let's give them a bit of bait. But to be honest with you, the catfish were so active over my spots last night. Like they're coming up and slapping and smashing around right over the top of the baited area. I don't know if maybe the bait that I put out where I had maggots and sort of small particles in there, maybe it attracted in the um, the roach and the smaller species and the cats were feeding on them. And I just I just think it just pushed the bream shoal off, to be honest with you. Um, however, not all is lost because this morning something awesome happened. Uh, Dave, next door to me, who I've just met on this session, lovely lad, couldn't meet a nicer angler. Um, first light, just after first light, his rod melted off. We had an epic battle. I went round to the swim just to see him slip in the net under the biggest fish in the lake, uh, the big common. We weighed it 46.4. Um, he was he was ecstatic, mate. He, he was shouting, well, not shouting. He was shaking and uh, just just over the moon, it was just, yeah. It, those moments in fishing are what make it for me. You know, whether I catch the fish, or whether I see someone else catch the fish and can share in that enjoyment, you know, that's that's the buzz, that's why we do it. So 46 pound four, big common. I'll put some steels up as well. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of hours and I'm gonna go and do some stuff with the family and uh, have a nice family day for bank holiday. But um, it's quite a successful bream trip so far. 1310 is the biggest. Got some lovely photos of that one as well. So I'm happy with my bream fishing. And uh, as I say, Dave next door, well done, mate. 46.4, congratulations, job done.